Hey, welcome to another episode on Vardy's Guards. Today I'm going to talk about the last category of guards, uh, which is the high guards. Um, I'm going to bash out a couple of these in a row because I've got the day off, so when my clothes don't change between videos, it's, it's not that disgusting, I promise. Um, so the high guards, right, there are three. And I've mentioned before, all the guards, you know, follow this kind of common pattern of where the sword is and leg forward, sword on the side. I've said it a few times. The high guards don't, right? The high guards stand alone. Um, and there are three high guards. I'll explain why it's not for. Um, I'm going to show a bit like what they're useful for and some, th some features about them that are surprising, um, as well as talk about, uh, well, I guess there was four if you count the one that I suppose include, but it's definitely not in Vardy. Um, so um, the three high guards as depicted, we have frontal, which Vardy says is, uh, has the answer to cut and thrust. Frontal. True window. I, I did a video on this right at the start of this, which is kind of one of the inspirations for the video, uh, as I mentioned, uh, for the whole series, to be honest. And, and as I mentioned, true window is high, right? We don't have it down here because that's very difficult to hold, particularly if you have breasts, uh, but also if you're wearing bulky kit. But in general, Vardy shows it properly up here as well. So, you know, that is, that is what it is in the book. That's not just an adaptation. And we have Falcon, okay? Quick note on Falcon. I hear lots of people say things like, oh, Falcon, uh, I don't want to break my stairs. Falcon is a nice high middle guard over the head, right? As far as I can tell, the source for that is Kingdom of Heaven, the movie with Orlando Bloom. When Vardy shows it, right, you can very clearly see the cross guard behind the head. Finally, he's holding it quite high up here. He's certainly not holding it up here. He's certainly not holding it in the center. He's certainly holding it on the right. I often hold it a bit further down, right? Vardy shows it legs closed, as I mentioned in the previous video. He likes to have the retracted legs for the high guards to kind of pre-slip the leg, but there's nothing wrong with having a wider guard as well. Um, Falcon, oh yeah, I forgot to say what they say, right? Um, Falcon, he explicitly says, is to make all kinds of defense. To defend in all sorts of ways, I think is the exact word. And through window, he says, raises what is incorrect from the art or lifts what is incorrect out of the art. Frontal is nice and easy, right? Defends, I'll come back to it. And the defensive properties of both frontal and um, true window. I should say, I always say frontal. Technically, it's a frontale, which is a, a manly tiara, but no one has a clue what that is in English. So frontal is the easiest way of giving a name to it in English. But let's, let's, let's talk first about this one, this lifting what is wrong from the art. Um, that might not, you might not recognize that phrase uh, if you've read Vardy before, particularly if you've read Windsor's tra latest translation. He says it lifts the left thigh from the art, right? The word here, cosy, cosy, with extra S turns from thing to, thing, thing to uh, thigh. And indeed, you know, it is shown with kind of left thigh raised. A couple of problems with that translation, not least the word Sinestra, right? Sinestra does mean left in modern Italian. At no other point in the book does Friday use Sinestra to mean left. He uses stancho, which kind of means tired or off, really, in, in this case, context, weak. Um, and uh, this phrase appears earlier in the book uh, as uh, levando uh, lato Sinestra, uh, so the, the left, uh, the Sinestra, whatever that is, act. Every other translation for that earlier phrase says, oh, it's lifting what's wrong, the wrong act from the art, well, not the left act from the art. The phrase appears twice with just one slightly different word. It's definitely not left thigh, right? Uh, lifting what's wrong from the art. Now, I think that, not the most helpful, I think that's a pun, right? Because this is the true window, and this is the old Fiore style false window. I've lifted what's wrong from the art, my point is raised. So to become true window, this is wrong, this is right, by lifting the wrong thing from the art, which is my point forward. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Not the most helpful advice, right? The other two then, right, give defensive advice. And that's kind of surprising, right? When you see uh, 
someone standing like this, your first thought is not, oh, they're going to defend against my attacks, but, oh, they're going to clonk me in the head. Um, and, um, you know, the, the defensive properties of, of this, I think, are equally strong for this. First thing to note for these two, I'll come back to Falcon, because I think Falcon's a bit of a special case. Um, for this pair, they're covering the head, right? And actually, they're quite nice, strong parrying guards, particularly, I find, if you're stepping in with the parry, right? They come with this nice, really good structure for that. Um, they really change the crossing of where you are when you've done an aggressive kind of parry coming forward versus kind of something like this, right? You get a much stronger, because you, you're, you're more likely to get the strong of your sword on theirs. Um, so you get a much stronger crossing, particularly against the, well, against the, a descending strike. Um, you lead to a higher crossing where coming under is, is easier, if anything, because you've kind of pushed them up. Uh, for this one in particular, if you're a bit further away or you wouldn't normally use it that way, it's got a lovely thrust coming in as well. Um, so you can parry to them. They're also really nice for parrying from, right? And, uh, you know, this, this in particular, very natural parry. This, again, very natural parry, which gets you to Vardy's ideal parry position of over your front foot, right? Um, and they charge that quite nicely. Um, and... When you combine the fact that this is covering the head with this, one of the ways I love to use them, and I'm going to talk about this more in my next video, is essentially to block the likely strike coming in. I tend to use frontal a lot against relatively new or relatively limited repertoire Lichtenau offenses. Why? Because they always come in like this, and their plan A is to always do this, so I stop their plan A by basically blocking that, right? They're not, they're not powering through this. They're not cutting through this. And then set up a nice kind of counterattack. Um, they're much worse, powering-wise, right? They're much worse at coming down low, okay? So, yes, they're great for kind of anything waist up. Leg strikes, you're, not, you're certainly not going to be powering down for leg strike coming in from that. Um, leg strike, leg parries, oh, yeah, that's another video I'm going to do. I'm going to do parrying with all the guards in another video. Leg parries are uncommon anyway, but as I said before, this is why I think Vardiola shows it with leg retracted, right? Leg vulnerable, leg not vulnerable. So my, my top half is defended, my bottom half is not really a target, um, unless you do a really kind of suicidal charge in. Um, Defensive properties of Falcon, right? Now, I used to say Falcon was a unique guard for Vardy because it was the only guard you couldn't parry to. I don't say that anymore. If my students are watching this, they just laughed because I really don't say it anymore. Um, so, the, the, but I think the, um, the core thing for Falcon, right, um, defending from it, is that what the nice feature of it is because it's high and on the right, anything coming at you is kind of down and left from it. So you can just really kind of come, I mean, yeah, you can come to this body, but it's still you're coming down on it. And you get this quite nice, similar to what I was talking about with the rising strikes in the previous video, you get this nice parry where you come really on top of the sword and it leads to quite an unfavorable crossing for your opponent. Um, I find this in particular. Both of these, both actually this and Falcon more than True Window, which is Falcon, are used against someone who's very thrusty, right? And I find that someone's very thrusty coming in, this kind of breaking motion downwards um, can really kind of defeat a thrust, which is a, a play you see in Fury. Um, and you need that extra power to be able to defeat a thrust. That's a good thrust, not a, not a shit thrust, but we don't really have to worry about that. Um, so the nice feature of Falcon defensively is exactly this. You kind of come down on top of a sword, you come to this nice crossing, and you've only really got one way to go. You can also parry to Falcon, right? Um, it's uh, a little controversial. I tried to teach it to my students, and in the exercise, I universally got a, huh? Um, I've since had some success, probably because I mentioned it at every possible occasion, and... 
at least like two people it stuck with, not like most of them. I have a lot of students. Um, with the the Falcon as a parry, what normally comes up for me is after, and I do this a lot, right? if I've cut low, so that I'm under the sword, often you can find if you do a body cut, your sword is kind of stuck to it. So coming up kind of like this isn't going to be very easy, especially if the sword is over mine. The Falcon parry, just a quick snap up, often with an exit for me, right? Uh, covering the head. As I said before, right, this falcon, but anything that looks kind of like this, I would treat as falcon. Normally you have to come a bit further forward if you want to use it as a parry. Um, but I consider that an acceptable variation of it. I'll show some, some shots of, of a falcon parry. There are other circumstances where you use it. Another one actually is, is another fun one is from here. If someone's targeting here, you can just quickly switch to a nice falcon, which then charges a, a turning cut to the other side. Very nice as well. Again, I'll show a video of that. Um, so as I say, like this is these are surprising facts, right? I don't think you look at these guards and you think immediately think, oh, they're defensive. I said this in a previous video. Fighters got one line, right? One line to say everything about the guards. Um, and um, in this case, I think he used it to say something that's surprising rather than something that's obvious. Because of course, you can attack perfectly lovely from all these guards. Um, I'm going to struggle to not hit something when doing this with Falcon, so I have to do it this way, right? Yes, good, 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 good. With false edge, good. Wouldn't do the rising strike, right? I mean, you can kind of do it in the air. I can think of no reason why I would choose to do that over the horizontal, and it's way more awkward. Um, same, right, for these, yeah, uh, on your same side, straightforward, false edge for that one. Um, I sometimes have to defy Marty's edge rules for these ones, right, for these, on this side I go, uh, false edge for the rising, false edge for the horizontal, same if I was doing it this way, and I wouldn't do the rising horizontal on that side, um, but the other ones would work. Um, in general, the rising horizontal on your offside, um, way weaker, way harder, uh, particularly from the high guards. Um, again, some of those probably look weird, but you've got to bear in mind again, if I've used it as a parry, right, coming here is the obvious strike. What well, I like with uh, using frontal as a parry, here, rising strike to that side, I'm still covered, straight back to middle guard, right, nice little kind of fun little, uh, little switch up. Um, so they're all, and, and especially the descending strikes, right? You know, being high, you are charging a stronger cut, right? You are, you are charging a better cut than if you try to do a descending cut from a, from a low guard, you've got to rise up. So they've got this nice attacking, nice, strong defensive positions. You know, they're not terrible guards as anything. Of course, yeah, they charge a thrust very nicely, right? Um, now I spent less time on true window and I'll make a confession. True window is my second least used guard. I use variants of Sagittarius, depending on what you count by Sagittarius. I very rarely use Sagittarius like in its full original depicted version like this. Like this, I tend to use it more. But True Window, we have to accept that there are some challenges with it, um, particularly in kit. Um, as I said, the main benefit of True Window, I said this in a previous video, the main benefit of True Window over just a standard over the shoulder guard is it covers the head. Unless I'm fencing a left-hander, that doesn't normally matter that much, or if I'm using it as a parry. Um, the problem with true window, because it is quite high, if you get the cutting arc wrong for this, you can have a quite large cutting arc, which is vulnerable to a counter thrust. This, uh, just being a bit lower and not having that extra movement, uh, movement is generally less vulnerable to that counter counter thrust. So you will see me, it's not in Vardy, you will see me in tournaments use this a lot. I also have an uh, arthritic shoulder and this hurts it more than this. Um, so I like to rest it as much as possible. Um, so yeah, true confession time. Not the biggest fan of true window um, by comparison to the other guard. It's the one I use the least, although I do still use it, right? It is nice to use. Uh, the main thing to watch out with true window again, if you're doing, because you are high, if you are doing this cut, try and make sure your cut is nice and tight. Try not to have a big, 
large cutting motion because that bigger large cutting motion is more vulnerable to a counter thrust. High guards are high guards are intimidating, right? Especially if you're fencing someone who's big, they're standing nice like this, ready to cover. You know, it does make people reluctant to approach you if you're in one of these high guards. Less so I find frontal, right? People will look at it and think that's weird, what, what they're doing. Uh, that might just be that they're confused about Vardy, but Falcon in particular is an intimidating guard to approach, and you can use that to make people think, ah, maybe I don't want to come play with him. Um, they've also, it's also got some interesting properties uh, for guard advantage, but I'm going to talk about that when I talk about guard advantage as a whole. Um, final thing I want to say about the high guards, right? Um, I get asked this quite a bit, which is why I'm going to say it. Um, I get asked a lot, okay, well, if you say that you've got crown on the left and crown on the right and all the other guards that you've extrapolated, why isn't the same true of falcon on the right and falcon on the left, right? And there's a bunch of reasons why, right? There's a bunch of good reasons why. Um, principally, because there's zero evidence in the book anywhere to imply its existence, right? And I think that's the main one. Um, as I said in previous videos, uh, there are independent reasons within Vardy's book to think that the other ones exist. You know, there's some of his advice, some of the depictions. There's no such thing for Falcon. I think as well, you uh, try it. <laughs> it's a short version. Um, try it over your non-dominant leg. Um, this feels so nice and charged. You know, you're very comfortable. This feels pretty relaxed and comfortable, right? And this, especially over your front foot, feels really bound up and hideous and horrible. Um, I can think of no reason, again, why I'd want to do that. Even if you were trying to use it as a kind of a, this kind of parry, like I've used the Falcon parry, the, uh, the position of the wrists makes it much less strong. Um, in fact, I think you really struggle to do a lot of things I do out of the Falcon parry from that as well. So the short version why there isn't Falcon on the left is that there's no reason to think that there should be, um, either from playing about with it with a sword or from the book. While it'd be nice to have a neat 16 guards following a common pattern, we don't. So, shit happens. Got to live with it. Um, I have a diagram where there's a sad little hole for the falcon on the left, but it doesn't exist. Um, uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. In conclusion, high guards, they're great. Uh, they're kind of intimidating. They're good for setting up defenses. They can all be used to defend. You can parry to all of them, right? Um, they set up very different counterattacks if you parry to them rather than the middle guards. So, you know, there are reasons why you would choose to do it rather than, uh, rather than just be because you can. Um, and they're all pretty versatile counter attacking guards. Great, strong descending strikes on both sides, right? All of them can do a descending strike powerfully to either side, um, as well as doing other, other more interesting strikes that, uh, that might throw people, especially if you're using them after a parry. Um, thanks for watching. And I will, next video do, uh, will be, we'll be covering the topic that I've teased a bunch of times, which is advantage in guard.